King Kinneris, like King David, is portrayed always with a lyre or harp in his hand. In fact, Kenor, the Hebrew word used for harp that David plays in 1 Samuel 16.23, which says, And whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David would pick up his Kenor harp and play, and Saul would become well, and the spirit of distress would depart from him. Both King David and King Kinneris have etymological and artistic connections through this depiction of kings playing the Kinor, while David is the father of King Solomon, who introduces the worship of Aphrodite into the house of God, King Kinneris is the father of Adonis, who also introduces the worship of Aphrodite into the kingdom of Cyprus. And Solomon, like Adonis, is loved by hundreds of women. Solomon has hundreds of concubines, and Adonis has hundreds of lovers. Also, Adonis, like Jesus Christ, is mourned for by women, like Mary. And like Jesus, the blood of Adonis is thought to hold the power of eternal life. Every year during the spring equinox, the annual death and resurrection of Adonis was celebrated by the Cyprians and Phoenicians, similar to the Easter celebration of Christianity. Welcome back, Gnosis Seekers. Today, we are about to uncover the fascinating layers of history, culture, and mythology from across the world. We are diving into the sparkling Mediterranean, to an island that's seen the rise and fall of empires, the blend of civilizations, and the birthplace of gods and goddesses. Cyprus, the home of Aphrodite, also known as Venus. In this video, we will navigate through time, unearthing the origins of the religions that have thrived on this sun-soaked island, and the journey into an age where gods and goddesses held sway over the hearts and minds of the people. Yes, we're talking about two figures who have not only shaped Cypriot culture, but have left a lasting impact on Western civilization at large the alluring Aphrodite, and the handsome Adonis. From Neolithic hunter-gatherers to the Bronze Age worship of the Lady of Cyprus, and from the cults of Aphrodite and Adonis in the classical era to the lingering legends in the present-day folklore, this video will guide you through a journey of faith, myth, and the intertwining of both in a tale as old as time. Buckle up. Sophia lovers. We're about to embark on an epic exploration of love, beauty, tragedy, and rebirth on the island of love itself. If you're as excited as we are to plunge into these ancient narratives, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting historical adventures. Now, let's set sail and dive deep into the captivating religions of Cyprus and the enthralling stories of Aphrodite and Adonis. Cyprus has a long history, with evidence of human habitation dating back as far as the 10th millennium, 10,000 BCE. These earliest inhabitants are believed to have been hunter-gatherers who cross over to the island from the nearby regions of modern-day Lebanon. The first major wave of civilization in Cyprus was during the Neolithic period, around 7,000 to 6,000 BCE, when farming communities began to develop. The Bronze Age, which started around 2,500 BCE, brought significant advancements to metallurgy and commerce. Cyprus has since been occupied by a series of different civilizations, including the Mycenaean Greeks, Phoenicians, Romans, Byzantines, Arab Caliphate, French, Venetians, Ottoman Turks, and British. The Neolithic period on Cyprus, also known as the New Stone Age, is characterized by significant advancements 
human technology and culture. It's believed to have started around 8000 BCE and lasted to around 3900 BCE, the a ceramic and ceramic Neolithic periods, with and without pottery. In the a ceramic Neolithic period, Cyprus saw its first permanent human settlements, dating around 8000 BCE. These inhabitants lived in round houses and survived mainly by hunting, gathering, and fishing. The Kirokitia culture is a well-known example of this period with well-preserved archaeological site that has provided a great deal of information about the early settlers' way of life. These Kirokitia people are known for their innovative architecture, including stone round houses, which were often partially buried in the ground for insulation. The ceramic Neolithic period from 4500 to 3900 BC marked the introduction of more sophisticated tools and the beginning of agriculture and trade. The Sotira culture is a significant group from this period. During this time, Cyprus had significant interactions with surrounding regions, especially the Levantine coast and evidenced by commonality in certain types of pottery and other artifacts. Despite being an island, Cyprus had a rich Neolithic culture that closely mirrored the major developments happening on the mainland at the same time. The evidence of these ancient cultures provides invaluable insights into human journey from hunter-gatherers to settled farming communities. The Copper Age, also known as the Chacolithic Age, in Cyprus is believed to have begun around 3900 BCE and continued until the advent of the Bronze Age around 2500 BCE. This period is characterized by a development of copper use, in addition to stone for tools and other items. While farming continued to be the primary source of sustenance during the Copper Age, the inhabitants of Cyprus began to master the smelting and working of copper, which was abundant on the island. This allowed for the production of more durable tools, weapons, and other objects facilitating a significant advancement in technology. Idols for worship were designed during this period. The Cypriot Chocolithic period is also noted for the production of distinctively decorated pottery for the beginning of trade relations with the surrounding regions. Artifacts from this period, such as the cruciform figurines, plank-shaped figurines, and pottery with complex incised decoration show a sophistication in their craftsmanship. These artifacts indicate that society was becoming more complex with the development of new rituals and social norms. In terms of settlement, people during this period tended to live in small villages, usually built on hills, which allowed them to easily defend themselves. Burial practices also became more elaborate during this Copper Age, with the dead often buried under the floors of homes or in designated cemeteries. Grave goods became more common, suggesting a belief in the afterlife. This was an important period in Cyprus's history as the technological advancements and cultural developments set the stage for the Bronze Age, during which the island became a significant player in the Eastern Mediterranean region. The Bronze Age of Cyprus also known as the Cypriot Bronze Age, extended from 2300 to 1000 BCE. This period saw the development of more complex political economic systems and the emergence of new religious practices. Based on the archaeological evidence, it appears that a fertility goddess was widely worshipped on Cyprus during the Bronze Age. This is suggested by numerous terracotta figurines of women, often pregnant or with emphasized sexual characteristics, which have been found in tombs and sanctuaries. The bowl also appears to have been an important religious symbol, possibly associated with fertility, strength, and power. Horn bowl figurines and images of bowls are common in Bronze Age Cypriot art. Numerous Bronze Age sanctuaries have been discovered on Cyprus, 
These often include open-air altars and a variety of religious artifacts, including figurines and ceremonial vessels. Some sanctuaries also contain large stone structures, possibly used for communal religious ceremonies. During the Bronze Age, the dead were often buried with a variety of grave goods, suggesting a belief in an afterlife. These grave goods often included religious objects and figurines, 